got to get into it, man. AJ's been talking, and you know when AJ speaks, the world stops to listen. The bro. world goes nuts. The world man. goes mad in the world. And you know what? I don't think sometimes... We have to understand because AJ's got that thing. He said, "Don't run. Why are you not so? I didn't even know like that's how you felt. Like mm-hmm. I didn't even think this news was going to be big news. I know I'm talking about my ex trainer and that, and <laughs> how I didn't think he helped me enough. But why is everybody going? Crazy? Why are they surprised that? Like <laughs> I hate that. By the way, I hate that. You know, he makes me laugh, man. I hate that. But yeah, what's the quotes, man? What we got? So Anthony Joshua started speaking, and as always, when AJ speaks, the needle moves. Of course. So he was speaking about Rob McCracken, and he says today, Rob McCracken's a really good coach. Mm. Only thing I'd say is look at Carl Froch's nose. He just didn't teach me defense. Rob, Rob was too committed to the Olympic team, not the pros. I gave Rob my best years, and now I've got to dig deep to, to get them back. Okay, so, so we've heard, we both listened to the audio, right? We went back and listened to the audio. The majority of people have responded to the quote and the quote alone. You have to listen to it as you one. Have to, but then it doesn't. It's not even if you hear that. Like, it's not a vindication. You, it's it's just, not a vindication, but it's not said with it's more how nuanced. I read it. Yeah. If I never listened to it, I'd be like, oh, if you if you only read it, you'd be like, yeah, Rob's a good coach, but he didn't teach me nothing. Like, look at Carl Froch's. It sounds really aggressive. Yeah, and it's absolutely not. It's said, but then even if it's said with uh, with not the level of venom, it's still the Carl Froch's nose. Is a crazy all it sidebar. Is, all though. it is is a jab back at Carl Froch. Carl Froch has been, t- he's literally been campaigning on AJ's name as a yeah. recent because clearly him and Rob McCracken are dogs. So you're out here doing different things. You know, you fired him and you've gone to a new trainer. He's feeling aggrieved on his behalf. Mm-hmm. So it's like somebody, you know, they're working with you and then they fire you, but then they're around me and I'm <laughs> emptying the clip on my yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's Travis's problem? Well, <laughs> is what it is. It's just literally that situation. Mm. So him now jabbing back is just like a little light touch. It wasn't even anything crazy. But he's like, come on, man, look at his nose. He, did, he didn't know how one. to defend himself. It's a naughty one. It's though. a naughty one. Because it's naughty. It's, we can't even underplay it, like undersell it. And that's what I'm saying. Those are the little things I think about AJ. It's like, bro, that's a purposeful shot. It's like it how just Jay-Z, comes across. It's a Jay-Z it's one. It's a Jay-Z response. It's a Jay-Z one where Jay-Z would not do the whole verse. He yeah. won't do a whole verse on you to say, Listen, I'm you're washed and I'm better, and That's right. this is why you, my you'll mind do a is. whole song about him, and you've got two lines in this, <laughs> but two very deflating lines saying, "Look at my nose," and he's got to sit there and think, "Raw, like, could my nose look different?" He went, you know the ones. If it if it wasn't for Rob, how would my nose have looked? He's in the mirror, like, piss off, AJ. <laughs> no, you know you did that. Like, you, yeah, he pressed it like, talk about he's a war scars, mate. <laughs> and that's the that's the worst. <laughs> but yeah, um, so AJ's done that. But let's get into this thing because the convo was more new inside. The convo was interesting. The convo went in so many different places. Let's get into the part of him saying, you know what, like he couldn't learn defense. Yeah, because this is the thing, right? So you go back to the, what he what he does say about Rob and where the critique comes from. It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, it was fighter's instinct in those fights. It's how he spoke about those Klitsch goal fights and all those things. Mm-hmm. He's looking at it like... I was just fighting on vibes. Like, you know, Rob taught me how to fight. As a fighter, he wasn't a defensive fighter. He's a come Mm. forward and be on smoke. And he goes, and that's what he kind of taught me. But you start to learn that this isn't going to be enough going forward. Do you know what I mean? So he's like, he goes, even in camp, like he goes for for the Ruiz fight. He was sparring Solomon Dakers and another tall fighter for Ruiz. He's like, what, 5'10"? So Mm -hmm. he's like, this is a bit all over the place. And then he goes, then Rob comes at the end of the camp, like six weeks out from the fight. He's like, I prefer the Derek James setup because it's a, a camp of over, like he's overseeing. Everybody's in here working. Everybody's under the tutelage. Yeah. Whereas I think AJ is basically saying with these statements, he's like, I wanted more of a commitment from the trainer. Mm. He had, he had commitments he with committed the Olympic team, Olympics. but it's like, I need my trainer at the level I'm going. I'm world-class heavyweight champion. How is there somewhere else more as a, of a priority to you? But then you know what's hard, yeah? Now, I'm trying to look at this, like, play devil's advocate at this as well. Mm. Well, it's like you want this commitment, but you brought someone else around. Yeah, because... Like, no, but then no you- but he's been here. Like, he was here. This person didn't magically step into this team. So then... It's a random new face. And this, I'm talking about Angel Fernandez, right? But this is exactly that. But the reason why you can see how someone gets there. So let's say you're my manager. When you're around, I'm in my zone. Now, if you're not going to be around, I need someone around that's going to learn of you so that when you're not here, it feels that your energy is here. But it feels kind of what came first in terms of, you know, when they say chicken and the egg. Because when 
some point might have felt undermined because you remember like we started to hear many voices even on that in that fight one right there was a lot of people telling him he's doing really well right. right and it should have been one main trainer right and we're talking about um is this for part one or part two this is the first Usyk fight first Usyk there you go and it's when you there was a lot of cracks in the system That's there was right. a lot of cracks and it was like and it felt like when AJ was talking about why he lost it felt like he was saying other things happen outside of me I came wanting to be ready, but the team weren't ready. And the reason why I can say that, well, he's changed the whole team. But this is the, and this is the thing. So it's like, let's start to look at how things become the way they become, right? So the Ruiz one fight happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's sparring Solomon Dakers, all these other men to try and prepare for this style. Gets in there. It's a car crash situation and they go back and get it right. Second time around, you could imagine Rob would have spent more time in the camp because now it's a mayday situation. We're all going to be down on peas if we don't get this right. So they get it right. They go forward into the Usyk situation, but the cracks have already started to show because you weren't there and that's why that kind of thing started to take place. So now I want someone next to you who is always there yeah. to make up for it. But then now we get a car crash corner when too many people are talking and now Rob is probably feeling like, so you don't want to do things and he's probably feeling a bit nose out of joint but then the, those are the cracks of the type of trainer i want versus the type of trainer i have so this is not mm. even a case to say you're bad it's just that you're not always here and i need you here do you know what i mean so it's you get strange though because why would you give that up for because in the olympics these guys like i don't understand why you'd give up the bag for something that's not the bag. That's same here. Same I here. I don't. That's the part. So I'm like, it's well, what was he feeling? And this is why I say we have to look at this clip um, carefully, right? Because it's like, you're not going to invest more. I have the heavyweight champion of the world here. I have, if I go to the Olympics, it's going to take years. For this guy to come through. Before, this guy, before this guy becomes a cash cow. Yeah. So I don't understand. That's why I said there the must have been bag. things. No, I honestly feel, and this is just a take. I don't know. Mm. I honestly feel there must have been signs or things to say, hey, you need to start thinking of tomorrow because your tomorrow is no longer here See, in this place. Is that before that there must have been things happening, kind of like so you don't want to be in a situation now, Dillian White situation. You get the they that get a email, mad email, the lawyer, right? Email. The the lawyer email. And you're like, raw, like I didn't even think it was there. See, my thing is this, yeah. Like when you are at the top, the top level of your game. Like imagine you're, you know, Chappelle's manager or Kevin Hart's manager, mm -hmm. and you know the the relationship they have is tight. But yeah, there's times where I'm doing big Madison Square Garden and you're telling me, let me know how it goes. I'm in Massachusetts with this young comic that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I'm not hearing that. What do you mean? What's going on? What, how does that come? And then you start to understand AJ's mental psyche of being a, prop, a prolific student. As in, I will do what you tell me to do, regardless of what the outside noise looks like. I'm going to carry out your game plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So you have someone who is very much that trusting as a, you know, as a student you're going and going and coming. He's thinking, I don't like this feeling of being by myself. Clearly, mm. I don't have the independent movement in my it mind. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. This is what Trav, I'm saying. I'm saying to you, Sutton, as you said, it's that thing of being close to Dave Chappelle and walking away from it for something random. This, it yeah. doesn't make sense. Something is not adding up. There's a piece of the story that we never know. And it's going to go into that file that we're leaving with the, why did the dad go mad at um, Eddie Hearn? Eddie Hearn, yeah. Why the did this happen? It's the part in the autobiography when we like, only AJ is going to answer those questions for us properly. Because I know? think I think AJ has a reliant personality type. And I think maybe he's growing out of it with the traveling and different trainers and not really, because it's one of those things where it's like, after your first relationship, you grow up, you don't really go, you don't get like lost like same, that again. Like the same. You, yeah, it's changed now. You start to realize, wait, things can end. Things need to be, a bit more sensible rather than just, oh, it's the best thing ever. You know what I'm saying? Here's a question, and this is different, right? It's not really on the docket, but I think we should put it on there because the different, the two heavyweights have gone for American trainers now. Yeah. They've said, scrap the UK thing. And uh, like, so what are we saying? Is it like, are they just better out there? Well, let's what go, is going on? So well, let's look at, say, even Boatsy as well. Like, there's a lot of people that have Boatsy, you bank, even if it's, it hasn't gone well, but a lot of, so yeah. let's look at US culture versus British culture and just start there on a personal standpoint. There is a, a, a real hardcore cutthroat energy in America that isn't so much here. Okay. Like even just going out to New York to do stand up. Yeah. There's a feel. Even Ben Wick, actually. Sorry. That's what I'm saying. There's a feel of like compet like raucous competitive energy. Like, yo, I'm going to head top every one of you, man, if I can. 
But if not, then I'll respect you for the f- whilst we're at the same level because it's so fiery. You put that in a situation where these men are fighting, being in the gym, the culture is different. They don't talk to you to protect your ego. Like, mm. I don't imagine Rob McCracken sticking on AJ like how Derek James might in those mm. moments. We can pretend that, you know, people can scream, oh, it's probably like a father-son relationship. That's nonsense. That's not the case. Everyone don't get father-son status in your life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, especially when I've got a dad. This is what I'm saying. I don't have no one who I would ever say, yeah, he's like a dad to me. no one. My dad, that's it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? They're like, I don't put people on unnecessary big brother or uncle stick. No, like we're working together. This is mm. how the game is going. So when people like bellowing these things, they're projecting because of how they feel about what that relationship looks like. AJ mm. don't necessarily need to look at my man like a dad. He's looking at him like a trainer and you weren't doing the job I needed you to do. Mm. So these men out here are looking at it like, okay, well, I'm going to be, a, I'm taking you on. It's going to be my way. AJ's had to humble himself down because he's gone to Texas. He could yeah. have flown or off, tried to make him fly out. Before then man said, bro, get the people I've come. got Errol Spence. You're not my only champ. So yeah. you're going to have to fall into the fold. Straight away, he's, he's respected that and said, okay, well, I'm coming to you now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so then you're saying that it's not like they're better trainers, but there's a more elite atmosphere that they're walking into. That's right. Because AJ being the head honcho in his own camp is not beneficial. It's, it's one of the ones you've outgrown this stage of your career, this process where I'm the, the, the one people just want to be around. No, I need to be around people who are on it as well. Yeah, because that's what I got from the interview, man. He talks about, you know, seeing like Errol, seeing different people working hard in the gym. Yeah. And wanting that, like saying to himself, because I know when he's saying if if he could redo it again, yeah, Cordina and the court, if McCracken that's could, right. if he could redo it again, that's there'll be all different fighters in the gym going hard. You know, he said that he was very alone. He's trained alone. Everything was by himself. Exactly and that. he's always been this way. So he wasn't really motivated by anything. Yeah. Yeah. When you're the greatest in your space, it's hard. If you're the strongest in your team, your team's not strong enough. Fam, and you this is I mean? why you need to go into new situations. Just to link it again quickly, the last time I'm going to do this because it's unnecessary, but there's a comic who I bumped into out in America, right? This guy gigs four to six times every single day. Mm. Brother, I look at this guy's Instagram stories every single day and I look at it and think to myself, bloody hell. Mm. I don't, there's, I'm nowhere near gigging like how you're yeah. gigging, but your energy is, to see that up close, you say, okay, <laughs> I'm not doing uh, enough. It's a, punk, it's a peak behind the curtain. That's right. Let's level up. And I yeah. think someone like AJ at that point, you can get used to being, yeah, I'm the guy, I'm the guy in the gym. Nah, bro, go over there and not be the guy in the gym. And we've been crying out for him to, to need that. Well, all the then. things we've been saying, we've been right so about funny. We've been While we've been lot. speculating, we've been right about so much. We said AJ needs to be in a new environment, a new atmosphere. He needs that dog in him. He needs to, all these things that we say, look, maybe it's too angel. I wasn't sure about Fernandez. Same, same. I wasn't, I wasn't sure about Xavier as well, by the way. Just let you know. Oh, Dillian West. Dillian, yeah, I'm same, telling same. you. There's, there's been so many different occurrences and it's just, again, finding the right situation mm. that meshes, that's good for the fighter. And I think it's just stepping out of the norm. So even, I know Dillian was out there training in Portugal and he realised he didn't need that. He was just doing the madness. Yeah. He was Mar- with his dogs. Everything marinating. was just marinating. They said, oh, this, that and the other. No, he was very comfortable. It was bad. You need to take yourself but out. I'll tell you the part where I found fascinating, right? And this is something else we said as well. It's mm. like, we, people always talk about, oh, AJ needs to go back to that Klitschko performance and be like that. But we never really checked to see how AJ felt about those performances. Yeah. And today's com- that conversation on that podcast confirmed to me that he doesn't look at those with like, yeah, man, that was the best me. He looks at that like, brother, I was in there fighting on vibes alone. Mm. I was in there instinct, just scrapping for my life. Nothing about that was calculated. Sometimes vibes are good though. No, I hear that. But he... I understand he, what you're saying. But, I he, know but you he's mean. looking at it like, he goes, this is limited. This thing here is yeah. limited. I can't I just... You see what I'm saying? And I think he, where he's looking at those performances, like, yeah, I was just fighting. I can fight, fight, fight. Yeah, cool. But when I come up against certain opponents, I come unstuck and I don't know what to do. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't have the deep amateur pedigree. So he's trying to fix these problems at the top level. Yeah. 